Ah, hello, you're just in time for your session. Oh no. I'm wearing a neutral, unoffensive top. I have a camera and a mouth. By the unofficial rules of the internet echo chamber, that gives me authority to speak on issues surrounding mental health. Hi, my name is Grace Helbig. If you do not know, now you know your life is different now. I am not a professional therapist or a life coach, but sometimes I play one on the internet. Okay, very exciting business today. This video is sponsored by Cerebral, which is a fun word to say because it sounds like you're burping in your mouth while you're saying a very uh, highfalutin word. Love that. Love getting the guts out through the mouth. I was very excited when Cerebral wanted to work with me on a video. It gave me a real opportunity to think about what I want to say. The internet is such an important platform for expressing ideas that can change the world. What would you do? if you knew you could not fail. I'm working on some good impressions of some really inspiring leaders lately. Cerebral, for those of you that don't know, is an online mental health platform that provides access to prescription medication management and therapy for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and other conditions, all for a flat monthly rate. Treatment for ADHD, bipolar, and PTSD are also available in certain states. Cerebral offers online conveniency and privacy. The two holy grail items that the internet could provide you with. It allows you to do visits with your provider, your therapist, or your care counselor online from the privacy of your own home. You can message your care team at any time. It's like having your care team in your pocket on your mobile device. And there's comprehensive care. Your care team at Cerebral works together to create the best treatment plan for you. Your therapist, your care counselor, and your prescriber are all talking together, which doesn't normally happen in traditional settings. It's affordable with or without insurance. You can start Cerebral without insurance. However, Cerebral is in network with certain insurers. You start by filling out an online form. It's a simple questionnaire process, super easy. You answer a few questions to help Cerebral understand what you're going through. And from there, you can choose to subscribe to one of three different membership options based on your budget and your needs. And from there, the convenience continues. They offer an app that's available on Google Play or in the App Store. Champion your mental health is Cerebral's New Year slogan and that's cute. If you're interested, you can click the link in my description to start filling out your questionnaire and get matched with your provider right away. And your first month starts at only $30. I'm getting excited on your behalf. <sighs> All right. What does this have to do with what we're talking about in the video today? A lot. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about strategies and analogies that can help you in your life caveat, they might not. Again, there's not enough information or conversation around all this right now, so happy to be adding to a very small pile. I've recently discovered a concept that is floating around on the internet, most specifically TikTok. Yes, sometimes I go on TikTok and it scares me a little bit, but it also entices me like dairy. There's a fun and popular theory now being circulated called crab mentality. Have you heard about this? Crab mentality, also known as crab theory, to make it extra professional. Also known as the crab bucket effect for those that prefer to visualize a bucket when thinking about their mental health. Sometimes I do. The idea behind it is that a single crab in a bucket can get itself out with no problem. A bunch of crabs in a bucket, however, will fight and keep each other from getting out of the bucket, so much so that people that put crabs in buckets apparently don't need to put a lid on it when there's a lot of them in there because they'll keep grabbing at each other and pulling each other down rather than working together because they're crabs and they got little brains. Thinking behind it, if I can't have it, neither can you. In groups, people will try to reduce the self-confidence or the ability of those around them in order to get what they want. So I guess the idea is to recognize where you have crabs in your life that are pulling you down and to try to release or remove yourself from the crabby situation. I think that's a pretty effective analogy. It gives you Kate Blanche to just look around at those you're working with and say, you're a crab, you're a crab, you're a crab, you're a crab. I'm gonna get the f out of this bucket, you nasties. It got me thinking about how the animal world is so ripe with analogies for us to use to better ourselves in our relationships, creative endeavors, personal lives in general. Animals don't have access to therapy, as far as I know. And so their natural survival instincts, their innate capacity to survive, is the purest form of mental health.
ish, what other animal behaviors are out there that can be used as rich metaphors to enrich our personal lives and well-being. And oh, I found a few. The fun thing about the internet is you really don't need any credentials to put out some really grandiose, wide-sweeping ideas about uh, mental health that hopefully catch steam and become um, truths. So I'd like to introduce to you some other animal behavior analogies that I think can be applied to your everyday life in order to help you achieve success in whatever form that means to you. This is science and poetry combined. And that essentially is what psychology is. <laughs> Let me get my list. I've written these down. All of the information about these animal behaviors has been plucked randomly from a variety of unsourced uh, websites. So thank you so much for not disputing any of the absolutely sound arguments that I will be presenting to you today. The opossum postulate. How do you pronounce opossum? Opossum. 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 Okay. And that's how we find out answers to questions. Opossums can play dead for up to four hours to avoid death or capture by a predator. How does this apply to you? When predators start to threaten you, i.e. depression, Bonk. anxiety, or literally anything that threatens to disturb what I call Bonk. the touch me time, what do you do? Play dead? I guess some professionals call it taking a mental health day. Cancel everything. Cancel on everyone. Give them little to no information. It's your anxiety and you'll cry in your bed if you want to. Also when possums Bonk. play dead, sometimes they secrete a terrible odor and foam at the mouth to give the full effect to the predator that they're dead. When you decide to play dead or take a mental health day, commit. Get in bed, binge a reality show that you really don't care much about but it distracts you from all the cyclical negative self-talk. Secrete those bad smells. Order some buffalo cauliflower and let your butthole rip all night. Foam at the mouth. Commit to the full illusion. Take some pictures of yourself crying. Post it on social media so your boss predator knows to back off. You're ripping potential sharks under a weighted blanket because it's me time. It's the possum postulate. Nature. The ferret philosophy. Did you know that female ferrets will die if they don't mate once they go into heat. Morbid and sexy. How does this relate to you? Obviously. This is about getting what you want. When you set your sights on something, you have to go for it like you're gonna die if you don't. A sexy ferret philosopher once said, get your fucking ass up and work. In other words, if you get horny for an idea or a goal, you have to fuck that idea slash goal like your life depends on it. The ferret philosophy. The sloth drop. Sloths are majestic and horrifying creatures to me. One of their most endearing qualities to me is that they relieve themselves once a week and when they do, they can poop up to one third of their body weight. They can sh a third of their body in one go. <laughs> How does this apply to you? Easy. When it's time to let something go, you gotta let it go. I'm talking toxic friends, unfulfilling relationship, dead end job. What's another word for poop? When you identify a surplus of crap in your life, you don't wanna get rid of it little by little. You wanna have a big BM to get to a BM. Big bowel movement to get to a better me. The sloth drop. Simple. The giraffe hypothesis. Or the giraffe hypothesis. Or the giraffe hypothesis. Did you know that male giraffes will test a female giraffe's fertility by drinking her piss? Now you know it. Nature is delicate and beautiful. How does this apply to you? Easy. This obviously connects to romantic relationships. Pleasurable partnerships. Finding the right partner can be a very difficult and complex situation. You're really not gonna know someone until you experience the more intimate details of that person psychologically, physically, spiritually. So in line with the giraffe hypothesis, you gotta metaphorically drink their pee. You have to experience the intimate aspects of them to see if it's a right fit. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Drink their piss to see if it's a miss. Drink their pee, see if it's meant to be. I told you, science, poetry, that's psychology. You're still following along, right? I hope you're taking notes. Tongue-eating louse lesson. There's a parasite called Simothoa exigua, Chimothoa exigua, otherwise known as tongue-eating louse. The female tongue-eating louse is a parasite that enters fish through the gills. It will attach itself to the fish's tongue. Over time, it will destroy the fish's tongue, attach itself to the stump of what was the fish's tongue, and thus becomes the tongue. How does this apply to you? Uh, easy. If you don't like the way that someone is doing something, perhaps you think you can do it better, you gotta get in there, eat their tongue, become their tongue, now you're a tongue. This one's a bit savage. There's probably a more gentle metaphor about just sliding yourself without disruption into a position in which you benefit. If that doesn't work, eat their tongue. Horned lizard, blood lizard. The horned lizard has a very subtle way of evading predators. When the horned lizard is in a precarious situation, it squirts blood from its eyes. 
How does this apply to you? Simple. Whenever you find yourself in a stressful situation, reach for the bag of blood packets that you keep in your purse, go to the bathroom, drip them below your eyes, and then tell whoever it is that you need to leave. And if they ask you any questions, that's fucked up of them. Get you and your bloody lizard eyes out of there. Wow, we have reached the end of our session. This was incredible for me. These are some theories that I have been devoted to working on, and I'm very excited that I finally got to share them with you today. These animal metaphors are rich, they are profound, Found, they are enlightening and they are the reason I will probably not be allowed to visit zoos anymore So I hope you were able to find something interesting entertaining and educational here Thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up And if you're interested in cerebral click the link in the description below now I'm gonna go drop it like a sloth before I have an actual terrible accident other than that. I don't know Another fun one that a lot of people know, the otter idea. Popular fact that otters fall asleep holding hands with their love so they don't float away from each other in the night. So cute! How does this apply to you? Always fall asleep with your phone and a bat in your hand. When you wake up, you're gonna need one or the other, so keep them next to you at all times while you're sleeping.